WordStat is a text mining software to analyze large amount of unstructured text data. It is a desktop application that may be used either as a standalone software or as an add-on to KiddieMiner, our computer-assisted qualitative coding software, or as an add-on to a statistical software such as Theta or our own SimStat tool. When you want to import data, you could create data from a list of documents, and it could be either Word file, HTML file, RTF, plain text, but it could also be XPS file, PDF file, and eBooks. If you want to import from other sources, you could import from Excel, CSV, or tab admitted file, as well as Microsoft Access files. You could import from statistical software, survey platforms, importing both the open-ended and the closed-end question, importing from social media, we have a web collector that will import from those sources. You can also import journal reference from those reference management tool, as well as full journal articles. You could import news from Nexus, Nexus, and Factiva, as well as emails from your own account, either on Outlook, Hotmail, Gmail, or Mbox. And if this is not enough, you could also connect to some existing database using an ODBC connection or import XML file. For this demo, I will use a data set of more than 50,000 comments about airline companies. We scrape those comments from TripAdvisor, and we have information about seven uh, airline companies. We also have a satisfaction core from very unsatisfied to very satisfied, as well as a date. For our demonstration, I will combine what is in the title and the comments, and we'll see how it is related to both the company name, to the satisfaction score, and we may also see change over time by selecting a date variable. I can explore quickly and get the most frequent words, the most frequent phrases, as well as the most salient topics using the explore mode, but I will show you now the full mode. WordStat support three different approach. The exploratory text mining approach that is very fast and that will allow you to extract information very quickly from even a large collection of text. We also have a content analysis approach which use a taxonomy or a lexicon or dictionary to measure precisely specific topics that you may be interested in. We also have a supervised machine learning approach that will attempt to predict some outcome based on the training sets that you will provide the software with. So I will start with the exploratory text mining approach, and to do that, I will move to the frequency page. The first outcome we get is a table of the most frequent words in descending order. And as you can see, when I move from one row to the other, I can see how this word is being used by different airline companies, how it is associated with satisfaction score. I can, if I want, I can go back to the text. So for example, comfortable, I can see all the comments by right-clicking from here. But I can also do that for specific airlines, such as British Airways, and it will retrieve now all comments where comfortable is being used, but by British Airways, I could have done that as well with the satisfaction score. And I can also use this word cloud to select text, for example, flights, and right click, retrieve, and it will bring me all comments containing the word flights. To explore a little bit further, I can do a cross tab of all those words with the airline companies or satisfaction score. Here we have the airline companies. I could do it chi-square test, for example, and see which words are associated with different airlines. From here, it is easy to select several words and create either bar charts, line charts, area charts, radar charts. And from any one of those chart items, I can select it in order to maybe retrieve, for example, every time there's a comment for Air Transat, they mentioned the word vacation and I can go back to the text. This ability to go back to the text is a crucial feature that allows me to go back and see when I see a pattern, what it means, and how people use these specific words. 
Now you will see that on the side, I have a panel. This panel will allow me to see the relationship with other variables. Now it is redundant for companies. So I will select the date, change it to month and year and changing to a line chart. And if I want, I can also click and filter and you will see that the word cloud will reflect the words uh, of the specific airline that I've selected here. And if I select, for example, Air France, the word cloud will change and the satisfaction score for those three words will also be updated. I can also represent data in a different way using a bubble chart, for example, which is a way to represent a big cross table with bubble. The size represents here the frequency. I can change the size, flip it, as well as change the color to maybe reflect specific items. But of course, if I want to search from that, I can search, for example, for those four cells and it will retrieve all paragraphs that contain those selected words for those uh, selected airline companies. I can also explore using other tools. Let me show you a quick correspondence analysis that will allow me to see how words are being used for comments about different airline companies. This is a 2D representation, but I can also have it in 3D. Let's look at the satisfaction score. The correspondence analysis will allow me to see which words are associated with people who are very satisfied, satisfied, as well as those who are not satisfied. And if I want, I can zoom in and see which words they use. And from here, I can say, let's plot horrible and see that it is indeed associated more with people who are very unsatisfied. And again, I can search from that and retrieve all those comments where the word horrible has been mentioned. One quite useful tool to extract more information is to use a deviation table that will create a table of positive and negative words. So let me show you both. And it will actually allow me to see, for example, 20, let's go up to the 25 most specific words for people who are very unsatisfied in green. And those are the words that they don't use. So I can quickly identify things that are specific to say satisfaction score or maybe to a specific airline companies. So here I'm exploring with words, but if I want to go a little bit further, what I can do is I can extract phrases and phrases will be much more meaningful and phrases are also less ambiguous than words because a word may have more than one meaning, but a phrase will typically have a single meaning. And it will extract a list of most frequent phrases. We do, do restrict that to a thousand here. So now we have this table and I can see that I have the same kind of uh, visualization on the right. So a, not a word cloud, but a phrase cloud, as well as a satisfaction scale and my date variable. Again, I can change that to the company so that I can see more easily how different phrases are associated with different companies. And again, I can go back to the text. So British Airways, long haul, it will bring me all the comments from British Airways about long haul. Now we have comments all from British Airways all about long haul. Now, if I want to do a cross tab, I can do the same. I can tell the software, let's plot say 150 phrases and by doing that we will have the same ability to compare across airlines across satisfaction score or across time and find patterns there so let's try to see which phrases are associated with satisfaction okay now we have our table and if i do a correspondence analysis it will show me phrases associated with people who are not satisfied. And if I do my division table, it will also bring me those phrases and how specific they are to different scores. Now, another way to explore text is to look not at the word frequency per se, but look at words that appear together. And this is done through the co-occurrence page. 
Orstat offers several ways to look at this co-occurrence of words. The first thing it will do is that it will cluster words that tend to appear close to each other, and it will allow you to see those words as they are being grouped together, like leg and rooms, cabin crew, good food, etc. But as you move it, it started to create bigger topics, allowing you to see how those words are related. And as you can see, when I click on some topics, it actually show me again how those words tend to be associated with either airline companies or satisfaction score or time variable. We also have a kind of network graph that will allow me to see different kind of connection between words, and I can reduce the number of links and maybe display it differently using a force-based graph, a multi-dimensional scaling graph, or a circular graph. So this is a nice way to represent the connection between words, uh, but I could also when I don't have too many words, I could also create a multidimensional scaling plot that will allow me to see which word tend to be grouped together and which word tend not to be uh, mentioned together, allowing me to find broad topics. I do have access as well to the full co-occurrence table, as well as to the similarity matrix that allow me to see how often they appear together. And I can also focus on a single one using different tools. One is the proximity plot, which allow me, for example, for seats, which words are being mentioned when people were mentioning the word seats, when they were talking about, say, entertainment, which words were they talking about? And if I want to compare food and entertainment, I can also add food so that it will allow me to compare and see which words are associated with those. Again, like, we saw before, if I select a specific cell, I can also retrieve items containing both of those words. We did add also a feature in WordStat 9 so that if I want to see, for example, arrival, I can move it there and it will show me how arrival is associated with, with all the other words. And I can, again, put comfortable there and I can have different statistics and for each time I click on cell, it will actually show me where those words appear, but I can also see how this co-occurrence is associated with different companies. Comfortable in seats, for example, is more often associated with Virgin Airline and with people who are very satisfied. Now, probably the most powerful exploratory text mining technique is topic modeling. And to do topic modeling, you have to go on the extraction page and first sub page is the topic extraction routine and from here I will ask for 50 topics and if I do that the software will go through the entire 50,000 comments title and comments and it will extract a list of words like you see here which is typical of topic modeling but the software will try to go beyond that and add phrases as well as name each topics automatically now we have the topic. Uh, receive an email, phone call, things about windows, things about hotels, tea and coffee, and luggage, travel agents, TV shows and movies. The topic already contains words and phrases, but I can also get some suggestions about additional phrases that may be added to the topic. It may suggest to me some exception, phrase that doesn't seem to be related to the topic in question. It also suggests to me misspelling correction that may be important to do if I want to measure those topics. I can even go beyond that by pushing that to the crosstab page and I will do that. And what it will do now is that it will create a temporary taxonomy and it will apply it on a 50,000 comments. Then it will call the crosstab features, allowing me to do the same kind of analysis I did before on the words and the phrases. This is the crosstabs. I can compute some statistics, create a correspondence analysis, call the deviation table, 
And I can also do some bar charts for the specific airline companies here. I can switch items there to group differently, but I can also change and look at how those topics are associated with satisfaction or how they change over time. And let's do a pretty quick analysis to see whether we can find items that are associated with people who are not satisfied. Okay. Now I can also press this button, which is similar to this one, in order to do co-occurrence analysis on those topics. So let's try that. From here, I can do a clustering of all the topics. I can do some clustering, see how items are related. I can do multidimensional scaling in 2D or 3D. And again, do link analysis, proximity plot, co-occurrence analysis, etc. If I want to use this topic model on a new data set, I can even save it and it will create a dictionary. So let's call it airlines. Now, if I go here, you will see that the software created topics with words and phrases and with different weightings for each word and phrases. This is one way to standardize the way a topic model will be applied on a new data set. What we saw up until now was a more explanatory text mining approach, where the software will tell you what's in there, what are the patterns. But a second approach is a more deductive approach where you tell the software what to look for. And you do this by building dictionaries or taxonomies or lexicons. Those are different names being used to make reference to a categorization process where words and phrases may be used to identify topics. Now let me show you an example of what a dictionary may look like. I will open for that a dictionary that we created for course evaluation. So we identified a lot of positive and a lot of negative categories, a lot of items associated with educational dimension, course elements, lecture notes, etc. And if I take just one example, boring, for example, you will see that it grouped together different ways of expressing the idea of a, either a course, a lecture, or a reading being boring. A dictionary can contain words, it contains phrases, it contains word patterns, it can also contain proximity rules, and we will see that a little bit later. Now let's look at existing dictionaries available within WordStat, just to give you an example. WordStat comes with maybe eight or nine dictionaries. Some of them are for specific purpose, like this one is for brand personality analysis in marketing. So companies will try to attach a personality to specific products, for example, rugness for night shoes, excitement for maybe a sports car, sophistication for a perfume, sincerity for a banking service. We have other ones for political standing, corporate social responsibility, as well as a dictionary that try to measure different psychological concepts by looking at words and word patterns. Word sets also come with a sentiment dictionary that can be customized for a specific domain. Uh, but let me show you, let me go back to brand personality dictionary and I will show you some of the features that may be used to build your own dictionaries. I will disable that and let the software do word frequency. Now we have the most frequent words. Let me bring the dictionary panel. And I will be able to move items to existing categories or on top of new categories to create a new one. But what I want to show you is that I can also get some suggestions of words that are finite text and that may be synonym of the selected words. If I select, for example, comfortable, it will offer me as synonyms comfier, comfy, cozy, as related words, as well as several words that start with comfort, including some misspellings. And I can select those that are relevant. And if I want to create a new category out of that, I can move this to new category and simply name it.
and now we have this category. And I can go on, friendly, luggage. Again, I can see some words that would be relevant if I want to measure a reference to luggage, baggage, etc. Now, I can also do that on phrases. If I go to the phrase panel, I can have the same dictionary panel here that allow me to take phrases and move them to different categories. And it is often recommended to start categorizing phrases because phrases are unambiguous. Now, we saw some misspellings before. Let me show you several additional features that will allow you to deal with misspellings. Let's start by going back to the text processing. I will simply enable the dictionary, apply it to the 50,000 comments. So what it will do now is that it will categorize all those words and phrases into six categories. Now, if you go to the extraction page, we have a feature that will allow you to find misspellings and unknown words. If I click the search button, the software will identify misspellings of the words I have in my dictionary. Usually do a pretty decent job, so I typically select all and simply try to identify the items that are not proper replacement but I also have access to all the other words that are not necessarily in my dictionary. Some of them may be proper words like KLM, Gatwick, or Dubai. And if I want, I can add them to the dictionary, but I can also uh, select other ones like comfortable and decided to replace it with the proper spell words. And I have several choice. I can add them to my category. I can also tell the software to replace them in the text. So every word I will have listed on the right panel will be replaced automatically in all the documents. But my preferred method is to add them to the substitution list. So I will do that for this one, select comfortable, and then I will move to the category and then I will tell the software to substitute all of them. Now I have quite a lot of replacements and if I click the perform action button, what the software just did is that it added all those replacement to a substitution process that will occur before any other process. So when the software will apply this categorization model, it will also take into account the prior replacement that were done. In other words, all words in my dictionary will be recognized even if they are misspelled. You don't need to have a categorization model to use this feature. We implement it the possibility to do automatic spelling correction, even if you don't have a dictionary. So if you are doing exploratory text mining, say on 500 words, you can simply enable this feature and the software will find misspellings of those 500 top words and will add them to the substitution process. Now, another important feature is when you develop a dictionary is the ability to validate entries in your dictionary using a keyword in context feature. Let's take, for example, excitement. And if I do a keyword in context, the software will bring all items and will sort them on the keywords and either what come after or what come before. So here it is sorted on keywords and after, and I can look at several words, for example, new occur several times, but I can see that we have some false positive like New York New Delhi, New Zealand, and what I can do is I can, from here, select New York in the text editor below, right-click, and either exclude them or maybe create a new category, and let me call it destination. This way, when the software will find new, if it's followed by York, it won't categorize it as excitement, but as a destination. And I can do the same thing for New Delhi. Again, I can select part of it, right click, add it to destination. Same thing for New Zealand. Then I can sort on keywords and before, allowing me to identify other false positive. Now, Another important task is to identify false negative, things that you missed. And to do that, 
the best way is to use a keyword retrieval, which is typically used to bring items associated with some categories or some words, but set it to no keywords, and you tell the software to bring all paragraphs that contain no keywords, and by selecting word counts, you'll be able to retrieve all paragraphs, order them by size so that you will have the big paragraph at the top. Then you could also check the coverage of your dictionary by clicking on this button here, and it will show you the coverage to see how good your dictionary is at categorizing a sentence, paragraph, or documents. Probably the main benefit of a categorization model using a dictionary approach is that you can reapply it on new data sets. So it actually customizes the way you measure specific topic allowing you to reapply it on new data sets and maybe compare over time. When your dictionary is finished, there are several things that you can do. First, you can publish that so that it will be available both in QD Manner as well as in some other tools that I will show you later. We do have an SDK. If you want to integrate that into some data collection and data analysis process, it is possible to do that by purchasing the SDK, which is sold separately. You can also export the outcome of your calculation model to external file, such as Excel, CSV, JSON, SPSS, Stata, or several other files, or compute numerical variable representing the frequency of those content categories. You can feed such data to Tableau if you want to further explore relationship between those categories and any other variable, or if you want to create a dashboard and if you have any geographic information, such as zip code, IP address, latitude, longitude, country names, and so on, you can also call our own mapping tool to create interactive maps with such features as dynamic heat maps, chloropet maps, etc. We also had the ability in WordStat 9 to process data using R and Python scripts, allowing you to extend the capability of the software beyond existing features of WordStat, allowing you to test new algorithms or implement specific transformation, etc. What we have seen until now was the exploratory text mining features of WordStat, as well as the content analysis feature relying on the development of a form of taxonomy, or what we call a calculation model. Now let's have a quick look at the supervised machine learning of WordStat, and for that I will open a different data set. The data sets I will use for this demonstration is a set of 243 speeches from the 2008 U.S. presidential race. I have speeches from 10 candidates, and several of them can be quite long. And what I will try to do is predict not the political party, which should be easy, but instead try to predict which candidate delivers speeches. Now, I have to select the document as the text to analyze, and I will select the candidates as the independent variable. Now I will change some options. I do have stemming. I could use stemming, but I prefer to use lamentization here. I will also try to increase the number of words by selecting words that appear at least 10 times. I will also try to remove words that occur in only one document by setting a minimum frequency of two. And I will keep up to 3,000 words. So we'll see how many words we have. I will apply that, and I should get some frequency. I have 2,747 words. Now, if I want to do in machine learning, I have to go there. I have the candidate selected, which is what I want. And I also have several validation methods that I can choose from, and I will use a leave one out method. So what I will do is I will try to develop 243 models after removing each time a single document but try to predict which document was removed. If I click Run, now that I can see all those words and how they are related to different candidates with some statistics, from here I could manually select some items or select some of those words based on some criteria. But what I will do is I will use all the words and I will try to create a first prediction model. I can select either a naive base or a key nearest neighbor uh, machine learning approach, I will choose the naive base and I will select a uniform prior to make sure the software won't give more probability to candidates for which I have more speeches. 
Now, if I run this, I can see that the total accuracy is about uh, 68%. Now, what I can do is I can try to weight words differently and see how it will change the results. I get much better results with a overall accuracy of 86% and with F1 of 0.84. Now, if I want to improve those results, I know that I may be able to do that by selecting a limited number of features or a limited number of words or changing some options here, but a better solution would be to go to the experiment features of WordStat that will allow you to test many models. And here I will test a lot of options here. And from there, if I click here, it will select a specific number of words to be used in a model and apply different settings. And if I click Run, the software will test all those models one by one. And if I let the software run this way, it may come up with a model that will be better than all the other ones. And once I have my model, let me stop that. I can quit, go back to the table, and I will sort on the total accuracy. I have this one, which can predict that 88% with 100 words. If I double click on that, it will bring this model if I run it it will bring me back those results. And now I can publish that and use model in QD Manor or in other tools, including the SDK. I can also move to the apply page. From there, I can categorize a single document. I can categorize a list of documents. I can apply the model on my own data sets, or I can open another data set and apply the model on this data set. This is it for the supervised machine learning features of WordStat. We cover quite a lot of features in this demo. There are several additional features that were not covered in the demo. We may include some links to additional tutorial that will show you several of those features. But for now, this is it.